this this is this is um, built into the fabric of the reed money, if you will, the reed and steel to see. And we're just doing it early here. A lot of the stuff we do for the Cauchy integral will immediately transfer to the reed money. The Riemann integral just has different tag points, more generality than tags, right? Here the tags are always the leftmost uh, at points of the subject. We get this out of the way for this guy, but Riemann integrals are not too much. Yeah, it's obvious. Right? Intuitive, what do we say? Intuitively obvious to the most casual observers. That's ten pages of the word later. Yeah. I actually use that phrase on my final. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. There's a false point. That's and great. That's a true false point. That's great. 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 By inspection. Okay. So now we see why we need uniform continuity. Well, do you have it? If you have a closed interval, you have it. And that's the content of Pinus theorem, half of minus rho, or Pinus theorem. And Pinus theorem is this. Uh, if f is uh, I'll, I'll write it out. Continuous on A, B. If is the if, 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 is if, 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 we have to bootstrap uniform continuity from not much. What do we have? Well, we have a continuous function, and there's a lot stacked up here inside this closed interval. Is this guy compact? A continuous function on a compact set. Well, it, it, it's, it's closed and bounded, so it's compact. We need to compact. That's why we bothered to prove the Heine-Borel theorem. And that's why Heine's name is associated with both of them. OK? So here's, here's what we do. Buckle up. Um, all right. <laughs> so uh, I'll draw a picture. And I'll just like to do that. A. And uh, the, function, the function is continuous. If we uh, if we fix epsilon greater than zero by continuity pointwise continuity of f on a b, there exists a delta which will depend on epsilon and actually the point x at which we are at which we are invoking continuity such that that what yeah. such that if, that if 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 we're within this delta uh, if we're within that delta we can keep the function variation within epsilon okay right that's kind of the weight Wait, I'm going to be cute about this. Yes, there's a delta here. Uh, but I would like to use epsilon over 2. Yes, this is epsilon. I want to find a delta so that if I'm within, within uh, delta of a point x, the function variation is no greater than epsilon over 2, half of the pre-specified epsilon. I'll leave that here. So if, uh, if um, like the point y minus x absolute is less than this delta, epsilon over 2 x, that implies absolute f of y minus f of x is less than epsilon. Okay, so this is kind of a double strength uh, delta. F 
epsilon has been given to me, I now go out and use continuity. I, I just cut epsilon in half and I use the continuity condition to go find the corresponding element. That's all I've done. And I do that at every point. Okay? So everywhere along here, I have, for um, you know, uncountably many places along here, I have found a delta. I got lots of deltas here, don't I? One for each point x in the interval a b. All right. The next thing I want to do is construct an open interval around each point x. Here's a representative x. I would like to construct an interval around x. And here's the kicker. I'm not going to let that interval be two delta y, you know, delta above and delta below. I'm going to let it be only half that big at each x in AB. Construct, what shall we call it? The interval I sub x, which is x minus one half delta epsilon over two x comma x plus one half delta epsilon over two x close bracket. All right, I know it looks bad, but what have I done? This is another one of these double strength things. Now, if I'm within delta of x. The function variation is less than epsilon over 2. But I'm saying let's tighten it up even more. Let's only go half, half that way out, right? I'm at x. I'm, I could go all the way out plus and minus delta from x. But I'm not. I'm going to go all the way to delta over 2, right? Oh, yeah, real well within. I need that. Because I'm going to be a little sloppy later, and I need some slack here to take up, take well, you'll see. All right. I claim now. Claim is uh, the union covers the interval. How could it not? I have one of these things at every x, right? And it has some width, perhaps small, perhaps large, but some. And so everybody in A, B lies in one of these, or perhaps several, uh, one of these open intervals, right? Now, what did we prove about closed and bounded intervals like A, B that are covered with open intervals? There's only a finite set required because it's compact. So we turn the great compactness crank here, right? This makes the whole and this activates the entire proof. And then, unless I can say there exists um, I sub x k where k runs between 1 and n such that the union over k of the I x k is also covers A B. Okay? So now we have we'll take that as your conclusion. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, first I get uniform continuity, then I can do the partition. Alright, so what have, what have we got now? We had this gigantic cover with many, many elements in it. There was an open set centered at every point along AB. And because AB is closed and bounded, we turn the crank on Heine Morel and say that's a compact set, so I don't need this bazillion of them. All I need is a finite number of them. Uh, in fact, n of them. So K runs from 1 to N, I go pick these, these particular points. Right? So the XKs are sort of the centers of these very special finitely enumerated open intervals that cover A, B, right? The XKs are special points now. Spread along the interval A, B, there's an interval, an open interval centered on each one of those. And, and miraculously, that finite number of them covers the set. You see that? 
study funny thoughts. Okay. All right. Now what? Well, let's see. Uh, 